Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my episode with Jags to do of Syscoin. If you missed part one, go back and listen to that. There was a lot of good information there. Really a lot of good educational components on blockchain and what's going on right now in the space. But here on episode two, we talk a little bit more about Beatscoin and Vibravid and how it all meshes together with the Sys tech. So hope you enjoy part two. Here we go. Welcome to Rectified Radio, from the latest in crypto news, to educating the public. We aim to fight FUD and have fun talking blockchain. Fun segments, interactive guests, and more. This is Rectified Radio, powered by Vibrafid. You know, Bitcoin is interesting. It's building a business model on top and a token on the token layer. Um, and I like that you guys are doing the multi-chain thing. And just to, you know, finish off with, you know, what I was talking about with stable coins before we dive into the beat specifics, uh, I think the stable coins are generally going to have a lot of trouble. Uh, EU wants to ban them and I'm sure others will want to ban them. And that's strictly because of the compliance models. So there's no actual compliance models built into these these tokens is only post compliance which you can blacklist or whitelist mm-hmm. and that's not good enough because uh, that happens post transaction and right. a lot of that can be missed and some of them don't even do post uh, post compliance but in order for you to comply you really have to do uh, a pre compliance model and what are you know what the vision here is that what we're seeing where it's headed is the stable coins are not going to be like the whole market is going to die off unless there's some model where you can do checks prior to transactions, which means, you know, off-chain API checks, but then enforced by the blockchain somehow. So either they resort to permissioned blockchains or, you know, we we created a solution with Syscoin, um, the next release, where if you're a stablecoin provider, you have a token on Syscoin, maybe it's bridged from Ethereum, but you have some token you can enable an option for uh, notarization. You stick it in your address and your API endpoint. And uh, from there, the wallets will automatically comply and send off a request for every transaction to the endpoint. The endpoint awesome. could be some gateway, you know, likely using some multi-party computation to assign shares of signatures uh, across multiple nodes. So say like seven, seven different servers. Uh, you want five of seven to sign off. So not everyone has to be online at all times, but say five or four. And those different servers are responsible for different things. Maybe you do KYC checks. Maybe you do, um, you know, limit checks. Uh, maybe you do some other checks, like double spend protection, so you could instantly transfer those kind of things. And then you package that up into a signature, which is compliant to, you know, the on-chain, same as Bitcoin, it's just an ECDS signature. And that, now it gets enforced by the blockchain. If if that signature is missing, that transaction won't be valid. Um, so now you have the ability for you to do something like, okay, the user's from the States or he's from the Philippines. The destination is Africa. You know, based on African rules, banking regulations, you need to, you can't have more than $5,000 worth being sent without KYC or something like that. Or wow. if it's Philippines, every user must be part of the system. If, I, if you don't know who you are, you can't do a transaction. Now you, you're you getting into e-money and EMI licensing. Right, right, right. And so and you're not using a permissioned uh, blockchain. You're permissioning on a permissionless blockchain. So you're settling in a permissionless manner so you can trust the value stored, but you're um, authorizing your users so that you know you're not bleeding out to uh, money laundering and terrorism and all this other stuff that's possible if uh, if you're totally trustless. So, and that's really an opt opt in. But that's I think where we're going. Um, and, and maybe that will risk the stablecoin market. You never know. But yeah, it that, doesn't look really good. Yeah, that's that's a true solution that outside companies would adopt because, you know, ones that are not in blockchain, when they're considering that, that's exactly what they would be looking for. And it's, it really seems like you guys have kind of covered all your bases. And then that would also be a way for us to trust the stable coin, right? Like if, yeah. if a stable coin's issued there and, you know, I'm worried 
Tether or USDC is, you know, not really as liquid as they say they are, uh, th- this would be something that I can feel more comfortable with using. Yeah. Well, like, look, stable coins, they all have some type of issuer behind them, right? That makes the market. So the drawback is there's an API, there's some centralization in the transaction. But inherently, stable coins are centralized anyways, right? The value of stable yeah. coins are that you've settled, you've settled on a permissionless ledger. So it's irrefutable proof that you have value and it's yours. It's not somebody else's and nobody can send it um, outside of you. That's the value. And if you take that model um, and you, you play with it some more, um, since, you know, for example, Tether, they need Bitfinex. If Bitfinex goes away, um, Tether's worthless because you can't get cash for that system anymore. You can't get cash out of Tether anymore. So in the same way, that API needs to be up, just like Bitfinex needs to be up to make that market when people cash out. Mm-hmm. In the same way, um, Bitfinex would need to have those APIs running at all times maybe multiple parties. So not everyone needs to be online at once, but at least the APIs need to approve transactions similar to like a visa debit credit systems today, they have to be online, but that, that standard assumptions that are applied to stable coins anyways today. So, you know, the, the critics will point out that, okay, you're trying to centralize, but what we're trying to do is trying to make it work in the existing financial model. And then slowly, if regulators ease up, which I don't think they will, but if they do ease up, <laughs> they, you know what? Okay, well, we can't solve Bitcoin because it's totally decentralized. We can't solve Ethereum. We can't solve money leaking out. So what we're going to do is just totally open it up and we're going to find a different way to attack terrorism and a different way to attack uh, money laundering. Then you could just turn it off and that stuff goes away. But as far as I see it, it's uh, it's going to be a big problem. Um, it's going to risk the existence of stable coins, but but there's a solution. Like if they use this model, we can apply it to other blockchains as well. But you know, we'll be the first to market. So you know, hopefully, you'll gain some market share there. But it's an actual solution. I agree. I agree. Moving things back to kind of Beatscoin and Vibravid, decentralized social media platform. That's something that we've realized is a really tough undertaking, a fun one, but very tough, difficult to get right. But it's definitely something that's needed now with, you know, all the censorship going on and the demonetization and really people just not, content creators not having the same opportunity. Um, Your opinion from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, what do you think is the biggest advantage that Vibravid will be able to take advantage of when it comes to, you know, sys tech on our platform. Yeah. I mean, in, in general, the social media, the, the benefits you get are not from smart contracts that you're trying to automate things like steam. You're, you're everything's on the blockchain, right? I don't think that's where the value is because that won't scale in right. the long run, but I think the solutions are that you're applying some uh, value and settling it on a ledger. So votes potentially can get aggregated and settled but in a way that's auditable, right? So if you see content creator that's doing a lot of good things and, you know, you can confirm that all of those things they've done is on the ledger somewhere, posted somewhere, then that there's value there and companies will pay for that because they're going to see that you get a lot of traction, you get a lot of votes, you get a lot of viewers, um, they'll pay for it and they'll want you to content create some more. And so... It's not that you're going to say, oh, voting has to be paid to money and automatically does this and that. But it, it, it should fit into the existing environment in a scalable way. So you have the voters and you have the content creators and you have the proofs of everything they do, all their actions stored on a blockchain. Now, that could be any blockchain. It could be done on Syscoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin. But, you know, Syscoin has merged my own Bitcoin. So aggregating that data in a platform and then throwing it on a ledger uh, lets someone audit those through a click of a button. Um, as long as you know it's following the protocol, you can audit all the actions of a certain user. And as a con, as someone who's paying for this stuff, that's trying to find revenue by looking up content creators and throwing ads up or something like that, or getting them to show your product. You know, there's value there for you to be able to filter out who are the top 
content creators for kids toys and then you know those people were they'll garner more money to be able to show off your product for example so that's i think where the you know where the value there is if you don't have that then you have something like youtube that tells you you know what you're worth five bucks you're not worth 10 bucks and it's up to them to decide instead of uh, you instead of the ledger deciding for you right so it gets rid of that stuff if you have some guy you know that's really good and people are following him and they're free to follow them there's no censorship there and then you are paid accordingly because the rules are the rules are public and the information is settled on a public ledger now everyone will know kind of what everyone should be getting and you can know what you what you'll expect when you enter that ecosystem uh, to try to do some work or create content but i think other than the benefits of the social media itself i think there's payments involved and that's where syscoin specifically will shine for for payments when you're talking about paying people or taking some type of rewards and paying people out uh, or using a point of sale where you consider money or for a service that's where i think syscoin will will be a lot more valuable than other other platforms because of the scale factor right um but in general the social media stuff those was my thoughts and how to the business model around it how can uh, how we can benefit everyone yeah i mean the opportunities are endless and the thing is with these type of platforms there has to be some sort of hybrid approach to it you know when it comes to complete uh decentralization i think that's that's a fairy tale it's it's just not possible to to make a product that scales but from the payment perspectives man if we're able to scale the way we want to this is where syscoin becomes the best and the spt token will be the most popular one on the platform because yeah. there's so much more that we can do with it so i'm i'm excited to see where things go it depends on how you value like for for beats the social media side what what's the value that depends on who you ask but when you ask me the value is not everything is autonomous and everything all the data is there and it's immutable cuz to me that's dark net markets and yeah. censorship <laughs> yeah. and it's everyone knows what's right and what's wrong it's generically known through through the population everyone that you know what's right roughly and what's wrong and so it's not really a question of dark nets because that's really serving 1% of people less than that maybe um but it's more of how to you, how do you efficiently match buyers and sellers in a in a in a marketplace in this uh marketplace where there's social media involved uh and how do you drive uh, the circular economy in a more efficient way without having the censorship of the platform just banning people out right for no good reason like for example reddit just um taking off posts it doesn't like even though it's serving the greater good so if there's people willing to hear those thoughts or or whatever then that should be tied to revenue for those people and um those rules could be transparent but they don't need to be codified in an algorithm and make it right. autonomous like you can move on to another platform that does the same thing but this way it it follows the rules better and so you know if you're losing if you're doing that the goal is for the blockchain to be a court system right like the blockchain is an efficient court system nothing more you don't put all the rules on the blockchain it's meant for you to make a quick decision that you're guilty or innocent so if you store information that you can prove prove your case that you're guilty or innocent given those rules are global and those rules are tamper resistant as well you can hash those and put those on the blockchain as well now you have a powerful system where the company itself is held accountable so you're say it's it's youtube youtube puts rules that the, this many views you'll get paid this much and then also whoever ha- throws up content whoever ha- votes all that stuff is thrown on the blockchain in an efficient way through some type of aggregation now um anyone can check um okay this is the rule this is how many views that person got and so that's how much you know i can expect to be paid and if you're not then why not you know where's the payment for that person kind of thing and that's keeping the company honest so that i think that's where the value is and then once you have that in place 
then you have the people, companies, who are going to see um, how much value you're bringing, how many people follow you, and then you're going to get paid for that. So it creates that efficient model with transparency rather than hidden costs and hidden business relationships and fraud and all that stuff that happens behind the scene. Right, right. We're really excited about possibilities with, you know, content creators being able to market themselves and having a little more control and just getting a little more piece of the pie. So this journey has been very exciting and I'm glad Syscoin is now a part of it. I appreciate all the help that you've given us, Jag. You've Syscoin has been like top notch when it comes to communication and collaborating with other projects. So I'd recommend, you know, any business and any crypto project to take a look, start by using the bridge and see the endless possibilities that Sys has. But uh, other than that, man, it was a very educational time learning about the complexities inside Bitcoin and, and other blockchain aspects. So I appreciate you. Oh, no problem. You know, we're just enthusiastic about having you guys and having the ability to showcase what you guys are doing and work together. And, um, you know, in the end, it's all about creating value. And I think we're trying to create value by enabling you guys, which are creating the real value to the end users. So we're more infrastructural to hopefully um, get to a point where real projects come and bring that value, serve it to the final end users, which are the customers who are going to use this stuff. In terms of what we don't typically even involve customers, we usually B2B because, uh, you know, it's a blockchain. The average people aren't expected to use a blockchain, yeah. but <laughs> they they will use your platform, which will be easier to use because it has a wallet and it has web context and all that stuff. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a match where there's a marriage between what you guys know, um, how to deal with users and how to best make it UX, UI. And we know how to make the blockchain secure and scalable. And we put those two concepts together and, and we actually get somewhere rather than, you know, you have a system where I don't want to name names, but you have a system where <laughs> let's do UX, UI built right into the protocol. And um, it's not as decentralized because we'll do a validator model and uh, this way we'll get performance, but we'll throw everything on the blockchain because we can. And and we'll make fees free too while we're at it. <laughs> so, like, you get all that put together and it's like uh, you need the separation of concerns. And if you put all those separations in one box, um, the box explodes because as more people try to use it, the concerns get too big. And yeah. as the concerns get too big, the, the system implodes. You nailed it, man. It's the whole, that's the whole thing about the confusion, right? As people came in, there was confused. Developers themselves were confused as well. So people developed in some ways. And, and right now, I think it's very early still. Uh, the market hasn't filtered out what's right and what's wrong. They think maybe some of these other approaches, like maybe the validator approach to somehow work out in the end. Um, but we're strong believers of... Uh, you know, a full decentralized uh, verify then trust model because we think that's long term because it took hundreds of years to get here. And is the best in policy. one or two years, yeah. <laughs> Leave us with one last thing. Um, do you what, what's going on with Sis um, within the next couple of months? Uh, that's question number one. And then my last question is. Anyone who's brand new to learning about Sys, where would you suggest they go for starters? Yeah, um, what's coming up? I think we got this big 4.2 release, which includes all of that stuff I talked about with like pre-compliance and uh, the Syscoin UTXO. It was previously like Ethereum, it was account based, but moving to UTXO, which will mean that we could do payment channels. We got some cryptographers working on the. the problem that we mentioned about multi-currency and payments across multi-currencies there's a specific problem we're trying to solve to make that go um working with some other cryptographers to try to figure out multi-party commutation for generic bridging um that sort of stuff and uh, applying it um and threshold signatures um all the stuff that's happening in the crypto world where we were involved in behind the scenes even though we're you know no one really 
knows us to do that, but we definitely have our hands in that kind of stuff involved in the right places. Because, uh, you know, we're, we're anarchists, decentralized people at heart. And so yeah. trying to solve these things, but we still value the business world. We need the business world. So we need to fall into the regulation frameworks and make it work. Otherwise, we'll never get network effect. Um, so that's what's coming in a couple of months. I'm, I'm just finishing up integrations and API. So we'll have like a, a Web3 type of API for Syscoin, which is exciting because you don't need to touch the uh, Syscoin core. It'll be all web and um, it'll be really easy to use for developers. And uh, if you want to find out information, uh, it's, it's always um, pretty easy to, to go on our Discord or syscoin.org. But if you're a business and you're looking to solve problems or integrate into a scalable platform or just thinking about blockchain in general, um, that's where Blockchain Foundry is helpful. So it's a, a public company that's traded on CSC and its job is to spread awareness of the tech, um, but also help companies uh, solve problems through consultancy. And, and so, you know, where Syscoin doesn't make sense, we can also develop on other platforms and then um, just in general uh, connect people to the right other people since we're connected in the industry. So it's always beneficial to work with someone like us over hiring your own engineers and trying to do it yourself because, um, you know, we've been around for so long and something you get, we pay for when you, when you develop with us, it's uh, connect people in the right places and find the best solutions for them. So yeah, I think we're all rowing in this together and, uh, you know, hopefully with this next release, we'll start seeing some real traction. And uh, you guys being one of the early ones on this coin, I think uh, you stand to gain the most of that, I think. Yeah, man, I'm really excited. And I would say, yeah, for the typical blockchain enthusiast, crypto investor, I do think syscoin.org gives a good information um, without overwhelming someone who's not really well versed on the tech side. So, Jag, I appreciate yeah. you again so much. We'll stay in touch, and uh, we look forward to doing big things with Sis. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Rectified Radio Podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode, and make sure to check us out on Viberville.io for exclusive content. Peace. Congratulations, you stuck through the entire episode. We appreciate you listening through. I know not a lot of people can stick through an entire podcast of 30 minutes, an hour. And I know I don't have the most exciting personality in the world. So I want to reward someone. 500 Syscoin. Here's what you have to do. Make sure you're listening to this on Vibravid. Log in, make a comment of what you like the most from the podcast. I'm going to consider the first five comments that are made, and then I'm going to pick someone, and I'm going to send you 500 Syscoin. So make sure you put a way to communicate with you in there, whether it's your Telegram user ID or your Twitter handle. That way I can get in touch with you, and you can claim your reward. All right, guys. Thanks. I'm just about that action, boss.